Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show. I'm your host, Sarah Banta. I'm a health coach, natural supplement expert, and a busy mama three. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you're notified every week with my new podcast on Mondays and Tuesdays and now Thursdays. And if you haven't already, join my free group coaching on Telegram with the link below. There is no downside. I answer your questions every day of the week. And I post things every day to teach you and give you the control of your health. You will be a part of a like-minded group that supports you on your journey in addition to truly taking control of your health. And my goal, I cannot do it alone, is to reach everyone on earth with eyes to see and ears to hear my message of healing. So help me with that goal and share this podcast with a few of your friends who may need my help. Today, we're talking about histamine intolerance. And this is something that I had never had issues with, right? I'm not the one with asthma or allergies or um, skin breakouts other than acne. Um, but I was never a histamine person. I could eat foods that had high histamines, not an issue. I had a daughter and a husband that do have issues, but this is the problem. Things have changed over the pandemic due to the spike protein and environmental factors so many more people are suffering from histamine intolerance and don't know it, including me. I um, last fall was having this weird response. I was eating one of my favorite foods, salmon. Um, I usually eat fish twice, at least twice a week, and I'll eat it every day if I could. Um, but it's high histamine. Who knew? Now, I'm not saying don't eat fish, but I'm saying my body was in a state because I had been exposed to the spike protein. I didn't get COVID. I didn't get a jab. I just was exposed, like we all are. It's infiltrating our ecosystem. Regardless of who you are, that spike protein is affecting you. And it is in, in, in the literature. And um, what I found out was because of my state of health at that moment, I was having a higher histamine response. So let's back up. Most doctors aren't aware of this issue. And even the healthy holistic practitioners that are in my field aren't connecting the dots and they aren't seeing why this is happening. Now, most people out there would say out loud, no issues because they're eating the standard American diet. They're so inflamed that they're numb to any response, right? So if you're into your health and you think you're eating clean or whole food, regardless of your diet, whether it's vegan or paleo or carnivore, you are aware of your symptoms and you might see these histamine reactions and go, I don't understand. I haven't changed anything. What is going on? And this isn't the only thing that's happening. Insulin dysregulation is going up. People are saying, I don't understand. I'm pre-diabetic. I haven't changed the way I'm eating. I don't understand. My cholesterol levels are going up and I don't, I don't understand. I haven't changed anything. This is the spike protein, guys. This is the glyphosate, the GMOs, the, in, the increase of radiation. All of these things are coming in at us and they're playing and disrupting the way our bodies are meant to detox and uh, absorb the nutrients we're taking in and do what they're supposed to do. So a lot of healthy foods that were healthy for us four years ago or 20 years ago, but even just four years ago, are now causing issues and leading to chronic disease. So one of those things is histamines. And we talk about, Terry Cochran talks about five disruptors. You've got the amyloid proteins. We're going to get into this in a minute. Oxalates, sulfur, fat, right? Ketogenic diets, maybe that's not right for you. Fats and now histamines. Five things that are disrupting our bodies and the way they are supposed to work. Histamines, what are they? 
They are biogenic amines, a type of organic compound that serves various functions in the body. They're involved in the immune response, stomach acid, neurotransmission, but we think about them as an immune response, right? They're produced and stored in certain types of white blood cells called mast cells, and they are, they are also in the cells of the stomach lining. So as an immune response, histamines will when the immune system encounters a harmful harmful substance an allergen a pathogen the mast cells release histamines as part of an inflammatory response this causes blood vessels to dilate allowing blood white blood cells to reach the affected area and defend against the threat there the histamines are there for a reason we want histamines, right? We want our body to be, re to be able to react when we have a threat. Now, with stomach regulation, um, histamines are involved in the regulation of the gastric acid secretion. They stimulate the production of stomach acid by binding to specific receptors on the cells of the stomach lining. And this acid is needed for digestion. So histamines can affect your digestion. And in the central nervous system, histamines act as neurotransmitters. They play a role in wakefulness, alertness, and that sleep-wake cycle. How many of you are having issues with sleeping now, right? So the histaminergic neurons are found in the brain, and they're involved in maintaining cognitive cognitive function and regulating the sleep. So also allergic reactions. And this is what we think of when we think of histamines are the allergic reactions. So whether it's sneezing, itching, hives, nasal congestion, when the body mistakenly identifies a harmful, harmless substance, like an allergen, as a threat, it releases histamines and causes this allergy um, response. So a lot of times my husband's very um, sensitive to histamines, right? So if the first thing that happens is he will get head pressure right here or in his eyes. And he's like, what did I eat? What'd you give me? What'd you feed me? Well, it could be as simple as berries. And we'll get into that in a minute. Um, histamine intolerance. So this is a condition when the body is unable to properly metabolize histamine, that naturally occurring compound. And when histamine builds up in the body due to the inefficient processing, it's going to lead to the symptoms, headaches migraines, digestive issues, abdominal pain, diarrhea, other gastrointestinal problems, skin reactions, hives, itching, rashes. Um, in Chinese medicine, they call those heat signs. So anything red, inflamed, that's a heat sign. Uh, nasal respiratory symptoms, congestion, sneezing, runny nose, difficulty breathing, fatigue, so just maybe you're just tired. There's a lot of reasons we're tired out there. So that symptom doesn't mean that you have a histamine intolerance, but it could be one of them. Flushing. So do you ever feel your face just get really red and hot? All of a sudden you look in the mirror and you look like a cherry tomato. That is a, a sign of histamine intolerance. An irregular heartbeat. So your rapid heart or irregular heartbeats. So histamine intolerance is sometimes linked to a deficiency in the enzyme called um, diamine oxidase, DAO, and or histamine and methyltransferase, which they are responsible for breaking down the histamine in the body. So when your body's working and nothing is disrupting it, the histamine metabolism is going to work and take care of those histamines. So You've got the abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting even, GERD, um, and the respiratory issues, the headaches, the fatigue, the cardiovascular symptoms. Now, it's central nervous system symptoms, you could be dizzy, difficult concentrating, anxiety. How many people are suffering from anxiety? Mood swings, insomnia. I mean, this is triggering some things in my own head, right? I haven't been sleeping as great as, as I have been. Did, am I eating something? Is there something in my food supply as clean as I think it is that might be high histamine? So this also can occur, obviously, from eating high histamine foods. Now, 
it's no no brainer alcohol is not good for you right um Super Bowl was yesterday. I'm sure some of you are suffering a little bit with a little hangover today, but that alcohol is not just doing, um, making you slower to react and giving you those hangover symptoms, but it's high histamine. Fermented foods. How many of you are going out there to Whole Foods and getting your kombucha thinking you're doing the right thing or sauerkraut? They are high histamine and you could be populating your gut with the wrong probiotics, right? We need to be careful with what probiotics we're putting in our body. Um, so you've got the fermented foods, the aged foods like cheese, blue cheese, all of those yummy cheeses, fish and shellfish. Now, this doesn't mean you don't have to stop eating your fish. We are going to come to some answers here. But if you are in a compromised health state, that's where you might want to stay off the fish for a little bit. Bone broth. How many of you think bone broth is a healthy food? Go on a bone broth fast. Well, you're filling your body with histamines. Dairy. This is one of the reasons why so many people are um, intolerant of dairy is because of the histamines. Grains. Most of the grains, they have lectins. They typically have mold. They're probably ripping up your gut, but they also have high histamines. So you've got multiple things. So you're, you're having double or triple whammy as far as your symptoms go. From the lectins, from ripping your gut, the grains are stealing the nutrients out of your body. Did you know that? Not only do they not give you nutrients, but they're actually stealing some of the nutrients out of your body. And then the histamine. So then you're going to have a, a big reaction. Now, the superfood, avocados. Avocados are high histamine. I actually am allergic to avocados. Who knew? Now, that is the best nature's food, right? Full of healthy fat and no carbs. Well, it might be triggering a histamine response in your body. Tomatoes. Now, tomatoes are antiviral though. So they're good. They're and they but they do have um lectins. So you have to be careful. Are you okay with tomatoes? And with all of this stuff, why I recommend eliminating these foods we're going to be talking about. And then if you have your favorites that you want to introduce back in, you introduce one food at a time and after about two or three weeks of eliminating them and then you'll see how your body reacts. Soy Soy is not good for so many reasons. Um, it's all GMO, it is estrogenic, and it is high histamine. So for so many reasons, you want to stick, stay away from soy. Eggplant's my favorite food. Um, that is the food that I tried to have thinking it was going to be fine, and my, my stomach blew up. I looked like I was eight months pregnant. Oranges. Oranges, strawberries, and the vinegar. So balsamic vinegar and oil, right? We, we try to keep it simple with the salad dressings and the vinegars could be causing issues. So what has happened? What are we dealing with here? The hidden factors that worsen the histamine intolerance, that's by protein. So this is causing more histamine intolerance than ever before, including an increase in insulin dysregulation, leading to swings in blood sugar, independent of food intake, gut issues, um, central nervous system issues, lung issues, and skin issues. I had someone contact me today saying, Sarah, I don't need any sugar. I don't go out. But my doctor says I have um, insulin resi resistance. So many more people are seeing that. I'm actually seeing that. I have to be more careful now, especially if I've been exposed to the spike protein with my blood sugar. And I test my, my fat burning versus my carb burning with my lumen. You can you can check this out on the website, um, sarahbantahealth.com. But this, I just breathe into it as many times a day I want to, especially in the morning. That's the most important because you want to be in fat burning mode. If you're in fat burning mode, that means that your blood sugar is at a decent level. But there are mornings if I don't sleep well or if I eat too late or if I have a ton of carbs, but mainly stress. Um, 
then my blood sugar will be high. And this will tell me that I'm burning carbs. When I'm burning carbs, that's not a good sign at, at um, six in the morning. So this tool is a great tool to use. It just, it's linked to an app on your phone and you can test yourself. Um, you can either do that or continue blood glucose monitor or just testing your blood sugar throughout the day. So that's something that you definitely should be looking at because even some of the healthy foods that have no sugar could be causing an insulin spike. And that could be because of all of these things we're talking about. So the spike protein affects the histamines through three separate uh, pathways. There's a dysregulation of the histamine receptor gene HRH1 that leads to high histamine and exaggerated inflammatory response. And this triggers insulin imbalance. And that triggers chronic cortisol release, your stress hormone. And that release, that cortisol away from sugar is raising your blood sugar and is a fat storing hormone. This is all putting your body into survival mode. When we are in survival mode, what does our body care about? Slowing down the metabolism because we don't know when we're gonna eat. We might be hitting a famine or we might be being chased by a tiger. So our body doesn't know that we're in 2024 and have all the foods that we want and that we're not being chased by tigers, that our stressors are work and the spike protein. So what happens is our metabolism slowed down. We store fat around the belly to protect our expensive, amazing organs, our liver and kidneys and our gut. And then you also are going to um, get rid of your hair and your nails because your body doesn't care what you look like. Your wrinkles are going to come up. So you have to think about what happens. What does your body care about when it's in survival mode? So this is triggering a chronic cortisol release, your stress hormone that is putting you in survival mode. And as a result, those amazing adrenals, which are your battery packs, become depleted and chronic fatigue sets in. That's why we're going to also address the adrenals here. So as the second way is as the spike protein turns on the histamine receptor gene, HRH1, it intersects with the sulfation pathway and also intersects with the oxalate metabolism pathway, sulfur oxalates. And we've talked about those. And this is just one more way that those things are creating um, or wreaking havoc in the body. This disrupts the ability to metabolize and detox foods with sulfur and oxalates. So something to think about. We're going to get into what those foods are in a minute. The GABA response, so this is way number three, okay? The GABA response. GABA is a, a neurotransmitter that calms your nervous system down. It's what makes you relax. That response through the ACE2 receptor inhibition becomes impaired, which also leads to insulin dysregulation and adrenal depletion. That's why GABA, supplementing with GABA is important because that will actually, it's not just going to calm your brain down, but it's going to help with insulin regulation and your adrenals. Okay, so the sulfur. The sulfur foods away from histamines. They are the foods, the medications, the supplements. Someone asked me, does this, does this mean MSM? Yes, this means MSM. And you have to think about it. Supplements and medication are concentrated amounts of sulfur, right? So they worsen the histamine response. The foods with sulfur, sulfur broccoli, cauliflower, kale, cabbage, onions, garlic, and egg yolks. They used to be my favorite foods. I would I would roast them and I put a little cheese on them and garlic and onions. It was delicious, but it was making me retain five pounds of water. Literally, I took them out of my diet and the water weight disappeared. Didn't change any calories, didn't change my workout. Literally just took these sulfur foods out. Now the sulfur is now even being, so sulfur is being disrupted by glyphosate, GMOs and all of these other things before spike protein was even in our field. And now the spike protein is making it even worse and then triggering a histamine response. So four years ago when I would get bloated from just the sulfur foods, the cauliflower and the cabbage and holding on to five pounds of water, that might be 10 pounds of water on me now because of sulfur and histamine. So then I'm itchy and I get a skin reaction 
or whatever it is. So I'm, I would have the histamine and sulfur reaction. Next are the amyloids. And you hear me talking about this, but you guys, I'm not, I'm not the evil one. I'm just the messenger. Chicken used to be okay. Amyloids are found in proteins from chicken, turkey, pork, and conventionally raised beef. These are misfolded proteins that have infiltrated the, the farms because of the crowding of these animals. They are stressed. Would you want to live like they're living in these little cages um, next to each other, totally crowded? Well, it causes their tissues to become misfolded. Now, what that means to us is when we eat protein for our muscles and our hair and our tissues, is that you are supposed your liver is supposed to metabolize the protein, break it down into these amino acids, right? You know about amino acids because they're in the protein shakes. Well, you break them down into these amino acids, and then your body says, Huh, I need these four amino acids to build her bicep muscle. Okay, so then they repackage it in the liver and send it to where it needs to go. Amyloid proteins never get broken down. So where do what does your body do with them? It deposits them in your brain and causes Alzheimer's or in your tissues and cause other issues. They also cause gut issues. So here you are, you've got the good bacteria and the bad bacteria in your little sandbox of your gut and the spike, uh, the amyloids cause the, the bad guys like the E. coli and the salmonella to wreak havoc and take over the good guys in the gut. So then that's going to cause gut issues. But then what else is the problem is that it's actually triggering a higher histamine response because they are feeding the spike protein. So away from being exposed to the spike protein, these are feeding the spike protein, which produces more amyloids and increases the histamine response. It's this vicious cycle. So you want to lower your amyloid burden on the body. We are all going to have them, but we need to lower that burden. And then the oxalates. The oxalates containing foods put more of a burden on the body as the spike protein disrupts the oxalate metabolism even more, and then this worsens the histamine response. The oxalates, those are your spinach, your almonds. Get rid of the almond milk. Get rid of the almond butter, okay, and the spinach. Out of your diet, if you take one thing away from today, get rid of spinach and almonds. Kale, um, Swiss chard. And you've got the uh, most nuts, okay, berries, chocolate. Now, a little bit of chocolate, fine. Having it every single day probably is going to take that burden up. Turmeric, high in os oxalates. Who knew? You're taking turmeric for your joints, and it's causing an oxalate burden. And then that's probably worsening your histamine response, which is going to make your joints work e hurt even more. Okay, so this is all horrible news, I know. Um, we have to limit our diets. We have to find our sources of food that are coming from good places. Of course, we're trying to get rid of the processed foods, which is only a whole nother layer of making things worse. But there's good news. There are supplements that help with the histamine response. Now, what's so great about number one is the acceleridine iodine, is that this is doing so much for you. This is a no brainer for everyone in your family. So in addition to devitalizing all foreign pathogens like viruses and bacteria, the accelerodyne iodine is alleviating the side effects from the spike protein. They're helping take back your body to where it was before this, in, this infiltration of the spike protein occurred. It is anti-histamine, -histam so it will reduce the histamine, reduces allergies, it opens up the detox pathways that lead to histamine intolerance. It's helping with your estrogen dominance. It's helping with um, cleansing that liver. And it also helps with insulin resistance. So it's helping with the two things that cause accelerated aging, insulin resistance and um, toxicity, right? So we need to cleanse our detox pathways so that when we are hit with the amyloids, the oxalates or the sulfur, or the histamines that our livers, liver and our body can actually metabolize them well. So it is also helping support the thyroid function. 
most of you are walking around with hypothyroidism and it is providing the four and the three and the two for T4, T3, and T2 in your thyroid hormones. Did you know that every cell of your 100 trillion cells in your body has thyroid receptors on them, thyroid hormone receptors on them? And accelerodyne iodine is the only monoatomic iodine that goes to every cell and attaches where it's supposed to and kicks out those toxins like fluoride, bromide, chlorine, lead, mercury, radiation, and all of that other stuff that we've been talking about. Okay, so, so many more things that the accelerodyne iodine that can do that I can't talk about because I would be censored. So just a little tip, everyone in your family needs to be taking the accelerodyne iodine, not just for your histamines. Now, I'm super excited about Histamine Digest. This is new to Accelerated Health Products. This supplement helps digest histamines quickly using a patented DAO enzyme. So it's replacing that histamine enzyme that you need to break down histamines that our bodies might not be having. I take this with every dinner. Um, so I enjoy my spaghetti organic sauce, red sauce with my my low carb pasta and my amazing bison meatballs with shredded zucchini in them um, and accelerated ancient salt. But I take this and I feel great. I will take this with my fish. I will take this with a meal out. In last night had um, beef ribs that were amazing. Don't know it was in the barbecue sauce because it came from a restaurant. I took my histamine digest and I feel great today. So accelerated colloidal silver. This is amazing for your immune system and it strengthens that immune system while helping alleviate allergies, a histamine response, and just the overall inflammation. It is the only silver that is alkaline. And what you need to know is that when your body is acidic, um, disease flourishes, cancers flourish, right? So Keeping your body alkaline is a much more healthy, less stressful state, will, will reduce the inflammation throughout the body. I was just listening to a podcast this morning, Andrew Huberman, talking about oral health, which I am super excited to tackle um, in the next couple of weeks. But he's talking about what causes the cavities is the acidity in the mouth. So whatever you can do to keep your mouth um, alkaline your your oral health will will benefit and that's why even intermittent fasting and not eating for a couple hours to not have that acidity in your mouth is going to be beneficial so accelerated colloidal silver it's also enhanced with scalar frequencies to further strengthen the immune system devitalize foreign pathogens that could trigger the the histamine response it also is enhanced with frequencies to just take out the shock um, in, in the body. Everyone's got chalk in the body, so it just takes out the shock. So Ceramend, which is a serapeptase, and this is the best one that I have found, and you will hear a lot of people talking about serapeptase as a naturally occurring protolytic enzyme that takes apart the spike protein. And so a lot of people in this new world of spike protein have been talking about serapeptase to d just get rid of it. It helps with fibrins and inflammation. So it also helps lessen that histamine response related to the spike protein. Stress Mover, one of my favorite supplements. It, this is a Terry Cochran supplement. It contains manganese, which can help modulate the histamine um, by suppressing the mast cell activation. And taurine, one of my favorite supplements or ingredients, it also plays a role in reducing histamine and mast cell activity. Wild Lights. Why I like this is it takes into account the oxalate and sulfur burden, right? So it's rich in minerals such as the sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium that helps maintain the hydration. And what I do, I work out in the morning, I do a sauna session. So we are being depleted of our electrolytes. I put my accelerated ancient salt and my wild lights in my pre-workout drink and then also in my sauna drink because it is helping flush out the toxins. The salt helps plump up the blood 
right? To help then get the toxins out of every cell, but it's also giving me that potassium that I need for that sodium potassium pump. And there's, it's also opening the detoxification pathways and breaking down substances such as histamine. A lot of electrolyte formulas are man-made, um, essentially where the man is, is deciding how much potassium, how much sodium, how much chloride to put in it. These two are made by, by God, by nature, right? Salt from the, the Andes, the Himalayans, and Utah, and it's enhanced with scalar frequencies to help reorganize your DNA. It helps break down fat, it helps break down histamine, and it helps with fat metabolism. When I was nauseous a month ago and I couldn't get rid of the nausea until I did my liver flush, I would put the accelerated ancient salt on my tongue and it would help with the nausea. So both of those are super important. Immune mover. So this, it, it helps, it has stinging nettle extract which has histamine balancing mechanisms that can reduce histamine as well as overall inflammation. And remember, as strong as your, your immune system is, it can then handle all of these other threats. And that is something very important to think about. If your immune system is compromised by a spike protein, by COVID, by a virus, by the flu bug, by anything, by food poisoning, <clears throat> these other things are going to be able to rise up and take advantage of the environment. Adrenosin. So we talked about your adrenals. The spike protein is dysregulating the cortisol, the stress hormone release, depleting the adrenals and disrupting that healthy histamine response. Adrenosin is an adrenal glandular that helps support the adrenals proper function for energy and normal histamine response. You can take it daily. Um, GABA. I take this every day. It, it just takes down my brain, my stress, but the spike proteins causing that impaired GABA response, which is leading to your insulin dysregulation. So just by helping your GABA levels, you might help your insulin regulation and helping the, the histamine response. Megaspore, it's all about the gut, right? This is a spore biotic. So this is different than that kombucha that you're drinking for your probiotics or even a regular probiotic. This um, has a brain. So it goes, it stays asleep, it goes down through the stomach acid, it survives the stomach acid, it wakes up, it looks around and it says, we need more of this, more of that, and not so much of that. So it is gonna give you what it needs. It helps recondition the, the gut microbiome and promotes healthy microbial diversity which is going to support that healthy histamine response. Um, one, more, one more thought on the salt, the accelerated salt. Salt is antihistamine. It is alkaline. And in fact, both vasopressin and histamine are released when the body's salt deficient. The, the blood volume lowers when someone is salt deficient and the body will go into survival mode. There's that survival mode again by shutting down some selected capillaries to keep the blood pressure normal in the place where it needs to be normal. So the capillaries at the fingertips might be, you know, shut down. And it does that by releasing vasopressin and histamine. Furthermore, all 62 minerals in the accelerated ancient salt help balance out the alkalinity that we we're talking about and hydrate the inside of the cells, reducing inflammation and flushing out not just the toxins, but the parasites and the pathogens that contribute to histamine intolerance. The accelerated cellular detox powder, which is new and improved, super excited, does not have the psyllium husk that can cause issues with some of you out there. Um, and it's, it's fantastic. It is a combination of organic ingredients that bind up the toxins that lead to histamine intolerance, reduce inflammation in the gut caused by histamines and improve regularity, helps heal the gut. I take it before and after a meal that's questionable if I'm going out or if I'm traveling, but every day I will for sure take it um, during my sauna session because my body's releasing toxins. So I want the detox powder to grab that, but then I also take it at night before bed and to soak up any of the toxins from the day. 
Okay, so those are the supplements. I know it sounds like a lot. Um, and there's more that I could have mentioned, but I don't want to totally overwhelm you. But there are things that you can do in your diet. And when we talk about the diet, refer to the accelerated food guide. It lays everything out. What foods have oxalates, amyloids, um, sulfur, high histamine foods, moldy foods. Mold is something else that you have to be careful with because mold plays with histamines and oxalates. Um, so they all kind of play in the same sandbox and trigger one another. So with that being said, you can refer to the accelerated food guide for a list of foods that you can eat. And I eat amazing, delicious food every day. I do not feel limited or restricted. My gut is strong so that if I do eat a histamine food, then I'm okay. But you need to get your body strong first, eliminate all these triggers and then reevaluate. Okay, so the sulfur vegetable foods, they worsen that histamine response. Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, onions, garlic, egg yolks. Now, egg yolks have choline and they have a lot of nutrients in them. So you might want to be able to add that back in. Some medications and supplements also contain sulfur. Dim. Are you taking dim for your estrogen dominance? DIM is not just all of these sulfur containing foods, but they're concentrated. Are you doing green drinks that are having kale or, or some of these foods in them? That is concentrated. God did not intend for us to be eating these foods in blenders, right? You, you eat a stick of celery. You don't you don't sit down and eat two, two big bunches of celery at one time. So something to think about. Okay, you want to eliminate the amyloid proteins. Chicken, pork, turkey, conventionally raised beef, those amyloids are contributing to the histamine intolerance and strengthen the growth of the spike protein in the body, worsening your, um, your, your inflammation, gut issues, pathogenic load, and insulin dysregulation. So could a piece of chicken cause your insulin resistance? Yeah. It could. It could be a trigger that is causing this, this problem. Now, turkey, not as bad as chicken. If it's a, a homegrown chicken, probably okay. But really, when you look at a piece of chicken, there's no color to it. There's no nutrients in it. There's a lot of omega fat, omega-6 inflammatory fats in it. A lot of things that are not good for your body. When you look at wild animal protein, bison. Bison is the most nutrient-dense food on the planet. Our vegetables don't have the nutrition that they used to. You would have to eat 50, that's five zero peaches, to equal one peach in 1950. So I don't think any of you are going to go do that. You can't get all the nutrients you want from your vegan diet or your vegetables and fruit. Eat them for enjoyment, but focus on that wild animal protein as the basis. And you actually get some sulfur from those wild animal proteins. So you're getting what you need, right? And something about sulfur again, glutathione. That used to be something that is really good for you and your detox pathways. But you can't eat, you can't take in the glutathione, it could actually back up your, your liver, liver because of the sulfur. Now, you can use some of the, the patches, and there is a glutathione patch that triggers your own body's production of glutathione. So those are the amyloid proteins. I love bison, lamb, deer, elk, um, grass-fed, grass-finished beef, wild salmon, arctic char. Have you ever tried arctic char? It's amazing. Um, trout, right? Organic grass-fed, uh, or I'm sorry, organic pasture-raised eggs are okay for, for some people. So these are the proteins you want to focus on. You can um, order online. There's plenty of ranches around the country that you buy and direct from, and it's a lot cheaper. Did you know that cost is not an excuse anymore? Inflation 
is actually making the processed foods because of the packaging more expensive than the meats. So you can't use that as, a, as an excuse anymore. Cut out your processed foods and you'll have the money for your wild animal protein. I love NorthstarBison.com. I've got a link and a, a coupon that we'll put in the, in the show notes. Um, that is a great place where you can get hot dogs and bratwurst and ground meat and ribs and fillets and ribeyes, any cut you want of all of these meats that we're talking about. You want to eliminate the oxalates. So these foods, like I mentioned, spinach, almonds, berries, kale, most nuts, this is going to take the burden off of your system and lower your histamine response. There's lots of vegetables out there without the oxalates. And then you want to eliminate the high histamine foods, obviously. So that's going to lower your histamine burden on the body, allowing the digestive system to heal insulin and insulin to regulate histamine intolerance symptoms will start going away. So I hope this was helpful. Now I want to just touch on the spike protein again, away from histamines, you might see fluid imbalance. So you might have more water retention. Um, we've talked about the insulin issue, the insulin dysregulation. You might have more fibroids showing up in your body, in your breasts, in your tissues. Um, you might see a, a, a reduction in apoptosis. Apoptosis is that destruction of diseased and cancer cells. Guess what the number one thing is for apoptosis? Acceleridine iodine. Um, but with the spike protein, that is causing your body to not have that, um, that apoptosis in the body as much. <clears throat> you also will have more oxidative stress, more overall inflammation, and more of um, hormonal imbalances. That, that spike protein is affecting the small intestine, the ovaries, the testes, the lungs, cardiovascular system. You might wake up and go, God, I can't work out. I can't breathe as, much, as well as I normally could. You could have been exposed the day before. That's happened to me. Your kidneys, your gut. You really got to take care of your organs through all of this and get in touch with how you feel. Um, it's affecting your mental health as well. The spike protein away from the change in the global atmosphere and, and um, environment and the stresses the spike protein alone has been shown to cause mood disorders, more anxiety, and more depression. So you're not alone. Uh, histamines also are causing more ADHD. So that is why it's super important to be, um, you know, looking at these foods, getting rid of the processed foods for your kids, but getting rid of some of these other trigger foods for your children and helping them with their, their ADHD symptoms they don't want to be that kid in class and they don't want the medication. So some things to think about. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for joining me today. If I can help you with your health issues, you can contact me directly through the website, sarahbantahealth.com. Happy to put together a protocol for you. I know it's overwhelming, um, but for sure, join the free group coaching on Telegram with the link below. I teach you on a daily basis with tips and tools to enhance your health. I drive in this information so it doesn't go over your head and you get it. You actually get it and then you start making these changes. Um, you will be a part of a great group that supports each other, asks each other questions and, and cheers each other on. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram under Accelerated Health TV, or I'm sorry, Accelerated Health Products and across over 100 channels under Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show. My goal, I need your help, is to reach everyone on earth with eyes to see and ears to hear my message of healing. So help me with that goal. Share this with a few of your friends who may need my help. Join us every week, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, and then a hot topic on Thursdays. You can find all the supplements on my website and use Welcome 10 for 10% off site-wide. Thanks again for joining us here and have a great week.